Arcane has officially come to an end, and with war being the very thing that this season was building towards, with Ambessa looking to seek control, her connection to Victor and looking to build an army that didn't fear death and was part of the glorious evolution was what she felt was going to give that control to her. With a lot for the show to wrap up in just three episodes, it was always going to be a tall order. However, did the show successfully manage to do so? Well, let's dive into the final act of the show and discuss the fates of all of the main characters and what could potentially happen next. So, let's get into it. Here is Arcane Season 2, Episodes 7, 8, and 9, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Beauty of Episode 7 Act 3 kicked off with an episode that was just magnificent to watch. It was a standalone episode that pretty much allowed us to see what happened when Jace, Echo, and Heimerdinger went through the anomaly. And what was important about this was that from Jace's perspective, it showed us why he tried to kill Victor in episode 6 of the show. Jace was walking through the city in a different dimension after it was in ruins following Victor successfully completing the glorious evolution and every person ending up being interconnected as one. This was what motivated Jace to want to get back to his dimension and prevent it from happening. Within this episode, from Echo's point of view, we saw that he landed in a dimension where Hextech was never discovered, and it was a peaceful time. However, Echo knew that he needed to return because his world was facing risk. The importance of Echo's part in this episode was that it was in this dimension where he created another anomaly, and also a device which allowed him to go back in time by a couple of seconds, something which didn't sound that useful at the time, but it actually contributed to the stopping of Victor in the end. So this standalone episode provided answers and also planted a seed which was the time travel device which was so important in the concluding moments, especially when he went beyond the four second limit. Another reason that this episode was a standout was because it showed the love and care that Echo had for Jinx, something that contributed to Jinx not ending things for herself in her own dimension a couple of episodes later. This was because Echo was there to be able to stop her after experiencing powder in the dimension that he found himself trapped in. This really was an episode that contributed a lot in providing clarity and showing us the tools that would eventually be used during the ending. What the ending meant for Victor and Jace there was a line that Silco said to Echo when he was stuck in a different dimension, and he said, The greatest thing we can do in life is the power to forgive. This was a piece of dialogue that felt poignant when it was mentioned, and I feel like it was applicable for Silco and Vander in that moment, but most importantly in this season, for Jace and Victor. Jace didn't want to let Victor near the Hex Gates because he knew that he'd be able to gain total control, and that's exactly what we saw happening. This was until Echo's anomaly interacted with Victor and caused him to pretty much malfunction. Jace had the opportunity to destroy Victor, but he didn't. Jace mentioned how he once wanted to introduce magic to the world, but he now didn't want that type of power being the curse that it became. Victor saw the Grim Reaper type figure that was following Jace around, and he saw that it was a future version of himself that was old, and he then realized that it was himself that sent Jace to stop him. Victor said to Jace, Why do you persist after everything that I've done? And that was where the power of forgiveness that Silco mentioned came into question. Both Jace and Victor were longtime friends and had a deep sense of care for one another, and Jace was willing to forgive Victor for what he'd done. So much so that they both essentially imploded inside of the crystal, which then rendered the hold that Victor had over the city obsolete. The real question is, though, where did they go? Did they die? Well, I'm going to look at it like they went to a dimension where they could be together. It's a much more positive outlook and one which gives a happy ending to the duo which once had such a strong friendship. Victor believed that he could end suffering in the world and by having a hive mind and not allowing people to make a choice, he thought that that would be the answer. But in reality, he ultimately found out that in every timeline there was no end to suffering, pain and war. Only the constant hunt and pursuit to do so. The Final Battle for Mel and Ambessa The entirety of the final episode was a battle between good and evil and it was just epic to watch unfold. We saw Ambessa's army gaining the upper hand and death was something which was plaguing both sides of the city with them both losing soldiers. There was a sense of unity from the upper and lower and I do kind of wish that there was a bit more of a focus on that because I feel like it was quite a big deal and a bold move to make but there wasn't much attention on it. Ambessa was working with Victor in creating an army that didn't fear death as they were under his complete control. They were strong, hard to defeat, and acted as a unit under a hive mind. 
Ambessa did actually have the upper hand in taking over the city, but it was her own daughter Mel that ended up being the wolf and the catalyst for her mother's downfall. This was after she uncovered her mage abilities. Mel sent her to the Black Rose's control, and whilst she was there, Mel saw LeBlanc, the deceiver, and dragged her mother out of it. But by then, it was too late and she ultimately ended up dying. Mel got her mother's approval in her dying words, where she recognized her as the wolf that showed no mercy. But with Ambessa's death, her army no longer had a leader, so they were finished. Ambessa was always going to be going on the offensive because, as she said herself, we do not lament a warrior's death, we avenge it. So brute force and the iron fist that she carried was always the direction that it was going to be going in. She cared more for totalitarian control rather than her own family. Vian Jinx this was the arc that I was most looking forward to watching unfolding in the finale, and we saw that the sisters reconciled, put their differences aside, which absolutely dominated the first season, and they embraced the sisterly bond that they always had within their core. With Isha sacrificing herself at the end of episode 6, that sent Jinx into a spiral of self-destruction, and she wanted to end things for herself. Silco even returned to her as a vision and told her that the only way to break the cycle was to walk away, and that's what she went to do. She took herself away to end things, but Echo pulled her out of the mindset. There was a moment during the final scene where it looked like Vi might end up dying due to the platform breaking because of the weight of Warwick. But when Warwick awoke and went on a rampage, Jinx sacrificed herself so that Vi would be able to live. It always kind of felt like the narrative of the sisters was going to be going in that direction. We had a changing character when Jinx came back and contributed to the battle. But then we also had it again when she sacrificed herself by letting go with Warwick holding on to her. There are a couple of different outcomes. One is obviously death. Death in the sense that she could have been mauled by Warwick on the way down or died on impact. Jinx detonated one of her explosives before she landed and the memory of Vanda blowing out the candle before she went to sleep when she was younger felt like it could have been symbolic of her time coming to an end. However, a more positive and optimistic way to look at it, if you want to, is that we didn't actually see her die or her body. So Jinx could well have found a way to survive. Could she have ended up in a different dimension? Or did she just simply walk away like Silco told her to in her vision, meaning that she could embark on a new life somewhere else? Vi clearly hadn't heard from her, so the open-endedness of it implies that it's down to our interpretation. Other characters' endings in terms of the ending for the wider city, we saw that they were feeling the effects of war and they were mourning the people that they'd lost. Caitlin and Vi were together at last and you could tell that Vi was mourning her sister. Echo was also mourning Jinx as he was reflecting on his own. Singed actually got his daughter back to life, which is something that I found interesting. He didn't really want any part of this war. He was just a pawn in Ambessa's game, hence why we didn't really see him that much. I kind of liked that about him. He had his own motives and he managed to achieve it. My review of Act 3 I thought Act 3 of Arcane was strong, especially Episode 7 and 9. I thought Episode 7 in its own right was just beautiful and it was an intimate one which shone a light on the importance of what was on the horizon and how the show would ultimately end. And then alongside that, I thought Episode 9 was just a real immersive experience which had twists and turns along the way. It was always going to be a big job for the show to wrap up in a way that pleased everybody, and I imagine it probably failed to please everybody, as every show always does. However, they closed off all of the characters' chapters, which I respected. Even if it was just a brief moment, such as Singed bringing life to his daughter that we saw in the tank in Episode 6. One thing I feel didn't make much sense in the finale, though, was the importance that was put on Warwick. We saw that the Beast had lost all essence of Vanda in episode 8 of the show when Victor told Singe to proceed with the next steps, so there wasn't any part of Vanda that was inside of him in this act. So Vi mourning Vanda again in such a crucial moment, like we saw in Act 2, it didn't feel like the impactful move that the show probably wanted to have. The exploration of different art styles in this act was fantastic and really innovative. They drifted between so many different styles and they each contributed to the scenes well. This was felt most in Episode 7 and also in the conclusion of Episode 9. With the battle in Episode 9, I absolutely loved that the show just threw us in there. We saw the preparation, but we didn't see it commence. The fact that it just cut to the battlefield with Vi running allowed it to be riveting and action-packed. As per the previous acts, the song choices were impeccable and the timing of them was excellent. It allowed the emotions to flourish and it complemented the scene well. If I'm being honest though, I thought the ending would feel a bit more emotional. I probably found Act 2's finale a bit more emotionally engaging than Act 3, but that's just a personal preference. 
It's been confirmed that there's not actually going to be a season 3 of the show. However, I think there's definitely room for spin-off shows to be created, and I can imagine them thriving. There's a space in the world for shows like this, especially on the likes of Netflix, as it's a territory that's not really being claimed right now. So I'm hoping we'll get to see more like this in the future. So, there you have it. Arcane Season 2, Episodes 7, 8, and 9, Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos on Arcane Season 2, then click on the card in the top corner. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. What did you think of the final act? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.